Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the van. And today, what I want to do is try and tie up a few loose ends and put some links in the description of things that I've, jobs I've previously done. And subscribers have asked me, where did you get this or how did you do that? What I'm going to try and do is tie up all the loose ends in this little video today. So, here we go. First job of the day. One of my subscribers has asked me to explain how I put the curtains up at the back door of the van. Now, soft furnishings is not my fault here believe it or not uh, it's julie's department so um, when it comes to curtains and putting curtains up that's something that she would do however putting the curtain pole up is something that i did and i'll tell you how i did that first of all i, I bought a normal curtain pole uh, obviously curtain poles come in all different shapes and sizes and i just picked one the right length for the back doors of the van oh my elbow just cracked there did you hear that to put that curtain pole up i bought some pipe clips they're sort of for plumbing so you screw the clip onto the wall and then push the pipe into the clip and that holds it in place so what i did was i bought some 15 millimeter pipe clips from screw fix and then i just screwed it into the uh, one at each end and one in the middle for support and uh, then i put the curtains onto the pole first and then pushed the curtain pole into the clips and clipped it in so it's up there it's staying up it's going nowhere and then what i did is the curtains are quite long so i just got a pair of scissors out and cut them along so i've got the back of the van here let's see if i can show you what i mean now there's the stainless steel adjustable pole and there's the bit there the join where you can it slides in and out and this little white clip here is the pipe clip now that has a single screw that goes up in the middle of the pipe clip there i just screwed it straight into there i drilled a little pilot hole because it goes through the plastic trim that's on there solid it's going nowhere and there's one at each end and they clamp that pole in perfect the pole is actually fatter here than it is when it gets to the extended end it's skinnier here at the skinny end of the pole i've screwed it into the trim just exactly the same as i have there but at that end i've left the little clip over so the clip over clips over and holds that pole in place now i cut the curtains down there that's what it's like with the curtains closed and it makes it a little bit more private and keeps the wind out so there you go that's the curtain pole three clips one in the middle one at each end 15 millimeter pipe clips and i'll get one out of the garage now and i'll show you that so as promised i've been and got one of these out of the garage it's called a single hinged clip and you get them from screw fix now i used 15 millimeter ones on my curtain pole because that's how big my curtain pole was what it is is it's got one screw hole there i'll put my glasses on so i can see it's got a screw hole there so a single screw and that would it goes in that way okay so your screw goes up through the middle and into your trim and then your curtain pole obviously runs through there like that okay and then this little single hinged clip clips over and pushes in place like that okay and that snaps into place and there you go they only come in a few sizes these um 15 millimeter 22 millimeter whatever i'm not sure but that's what you need to hold them in place and you just screw them in and the curtain pole just clips into place there you go thanks very much for that question whoever asked me that i think it was trevor um and that's how you put them up so Tell your missus to stop giving you a hard time. Get them pipe clips sorted, mate. Okay. Next thing. Door trim. Screw caps. Okay. Now, these screw caps, the door trim on the CV40, and anybody who's got a, one of these CV vans has probably experienced the same problem. The door trim keeps coming off because it's put on with double-sided sticky tape. No good. What you need is uh, to screw that panel into place, and I'm sure Eldis will get around to doing that at some point. What I've done is screwed that panel on, because this panel here kept coming off. Um, and what I've done is I've put screwed it on and put these screw caps over the top. I'll put a link in this video's description of where you can get those e exact screw caps, and they're a great colour match for the door trim in my cv40 what's next on my list here right i put some led lights in and if you looked at my previous video the led lights at the back of my van around the bed area where you can change color and and uh you know fade in and out and do all kinds of things to them using this remote control now it's great if you're in bed you want to turn the lights on and off when you're in bed remote control led lights fantastic people have asked me where did i wire those lights into the 12 volt system now i'm no electrician okay so i'm not telling you to do what i've done i'll show you what i did because people again people have asked 
So I'm happy to tell you how I did it. Now, if I open this cupboard here, this wire here that you see, this black and red wire, that's plugged into the TV booster, signal booster, little box here. Don't know whether you can see that. I'll plug it in and then you'll be able to see. It plugs in there. Now, all I did with these lights, and there's the, the control box for them, is this wire, when you've cut the plug off the wire, that's where I wired it in. All I did was I spliced into that red and black wire, because that's definitely 12 volt for that uh, TV booster. I spliced into that wire there, and uh, and that's it that's the 12 volt and if you check out my previous video if you're interested in them they're really really good i can recommend them people have asked me where i wired them in that's where i wired them in and it doesn't affect me tv signal either so don't worry about that anyway that's what i did i'm not saying you've got to do the same thing you've only got to find a 12 volt feed but that's where i got mine i also put some led lights in the step down here along this edge of the step okay and i'll put some photographs in because you can't really see at the moment because it's daylight but what i did was i took the screws out of this metal trim okay there's only five screws so you take the five screws out this metal trim comes off then i put the led lights starting from here and they're just a self-adhesive stick-on strip and i put them all around here underneath it's just underneath the edge of that metal trim and up into this corner here okay then what I did was, and you can just see the infrared sensor there, just poking out the corner. So what I did then, and I'll try and get down low so you can see this. As you can see, you can see the LED lights there, okay, just underneath the step. This is the, the sensor that I've stuck up under the step there with just a bit of double-sided sticky tape. And right up in that corner, I don't know whether you can see it, but I drilled a hole, and I drilled the hole at an angle in this corner here straight through into this cupboard okay there's the hole so i drilled through the corner of the step and it comes out there like that it's not there's nothing behind the other side of it on my van it came out there as you can see and then the wires come through there i fed the wires through i've wired them straight into the fuse box okay so So that white wire you can see there runs into the fuse box and I'd have to take all that out to show you. I found the fuse for the fridge. So the reason why I've wired these step lights into there is because when I go out and leave the van, I turn the electrics off, the internal electrics, but there's just the fridge running. But when I come back, it means I can leave these step lights on because they're very low power LED use next to no power at all. And it lights the floor up lovely. So you're getting in now, you're not tripping up and getting in out in the dark. And I will show you some photographs of how they look on a night time. Now, again, I'm no electrician. I'm not an expert. I'm not telling you to do it as I've done it. That's, I'm just telling you how I did it in case that's useful information for you. you. You choose how you do your own, but that's how I did mine. Water tank tape. Now, in a previous video, I saw tape hanging down under the van. When I had a look, it's sort of an aluminium tape that's there to hold the insulation around the water tank. Now that tape, I think it's just duct tape, you know, but it's uh, it was peeling off, it had lost its sticky, whatever the reason, that tape was coming off. So I bought a roll of, uh, how would I describe it? It's in reinforced, aha, see, and you will come to me eventually. Uh, I bought a roll of reinforced aluminium tape and I thought I'll try that to repair my water tank. I've stuck it on the water tank and just to, uh, I, I peeled off all the, the stuff that was crap and it was just coming off. And I put that aluminium tape on and I'm gonna go now with you because I haven't checked on it. So this is the big test. Am I a fool or have I done something good? You decide. Let's have a look here. Let's get underneath the van. There you go. There's the the tape I put on there. That is still in place and it's never moved one tiny bit. But I can see over in that top corner, I don't know whether you can see that, but over in the top corner where I didn't put the new tape on, that old tape has already started peeling off. So that old tape will be pulled off and this new tape, this, if I can reach, this new tape here has never budged. So 
that'll be going on all the way around. Right, I get my breath back. You wouldn't think, would you, that you could get out of breath just by kneeling down and standing up again. Now, as you've seen, that aluminium tape has done a cracking job. Reinforced aluminium tape. Why they don't use it in the eldest factory, your guess is as good as mine. Now, that tape wasn't particularly expensive. And again, as usual, I'll put a link to that tape in the description of this video, just in case you want to go and check it out for yourself. If it didn't work, I'd tell you I did it this way and it was a failure, but that tape is great. Okay, so link in the description of that tape if you want some. I'd just like to say congratulations to Rick and Heather from Pearl the CV20. They did their first live broadcast on YouTube the other day and I think it was a great success. I certainly enjoyed chatting with them and I must apologise to them because I tried to ring Heather just to wish them good luck with their first live video and then I realised, oh, I've rang them just as they're about to start the video. So apologies to Rick and Heather for that, but also congratulations. Rick's very knowledgeable about the DIY in the van and stuff like that, and Heather makes sure he gets the jobs done. So go check them out if you haven't already, and well done with your live broadcast. Also, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to Stephen, who I work with. He's got a pooly wrist, bless him. Hopefully that'll get better soon and we'll get you back to work. Thanks very much for watching today. If you do enjoy these videos and find them entertaining or informative, then consider subscribing. You don't have to, it might not be your thing, but if you do, it would have helped my channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. So thank you very much, thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye for now, bye.